Ole Miss at Georgia. I'm so uncomfortable with this one. I made a pick, and I'm so uncomfortable. This is the second straight year I made a really good Ole Miss future. That has that's our no a good future in the SEC. I had Tennessee last year to win the division. You should have so many legs with that future. One loss to Bama. Like, I mean, you should just I, ah, man. How hard is and it for Lane? Done. Lane brings it up everywhere Lane is. All he could talk about is like you know, thanks guys for pissing saving Bama off. Thank you. Yeah, we. I have the only hope for Ole Miss futures for anyone that ta- tailed the twenty five to one is Kentucky has to beat Alabama. And then Auburn has to beat Alabama. And o- Ole Miss has to win out. <laughs> uh, so Ole Miss has to beat Georgia. What's that pay? 800, uh, 800 to one? <laughs> more than that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so if you want to join me, just open a parlay. You'll get better odds than I did. Um, so Ole Miss here is – they lost their tackle to an, starting tackle to an injury in practice yesterday, which is noteworthy. Uh, Georgia – 10 and a half point favorite here over under 58 and a half. I number one, you're going to see a lot of quarters coverage in this game from both defenses for what it's worth. Beck's numbers kind of dicey against quarters. Uh, and Jackson dart's been elite uh, against quarters coverage, but I, I can I just can't get a good. And look, you saw Georgia, the defense is taking a step back. They lost a ton of talent over the past two years. I was shocked that Missouri was able to run the ball on them last week. So that, you know, is a good sign for Ole Miss to try and get Judkins going here. And it's just not the same Georgia defense. I mean, look, who and who have they really played? I mean, you go back to Florida, doesn't look as good now, that win. Um, you know, Kentucky, you know, so like this, this is the best offense by far that they're going to face. And, you know, so I think Ole Miss can have some success on the offensive side of the ball. I Where I'm struggling the most is I just can't, I can't really get a read for the Ole Miss defense. They're definitely improved. They're definitely worrying more about the run. Last, I mean, the last year they would like drop eight. They brought in Pete Gold, and there's a lot of familiarity between these staffs too, which throws a wrench into it. But they're they're much better against the run. I, I just don't know how much better they are overall because, I mean, look, they held their their own against Bama, but Bama's offense can be just. We talked about it. Like they just go into shells for long periods of time. Who else has Ole Miss really faced that you say, okay, yeah, this is a great data point. I don't really know. I mean, I don't have much confidence because like the numbers are pretty good, but they played, you know, they played LSU and that game was, you know, 55, 49. Now LSU can score that on anybody, but Georgia tech was moving it. The Tulane backup was moving it a bit. And then they played Arkansas when it was Dan Enos. They played Auburn, who can't throw it. They played Vandy, and then they played Texas A&M, you know, who had injuries too and still put up 35, although that game was about to be a blowout before a blocked field goal return. So I just – I don't have a great feel for the Ole Miss defense. Um, And I think the Georgia defense is vulnerable. So – and the other thing, there's a lot of familiarity. I kind of lean the overs where I – like I make this cut right on. I'm at like 10. Um, the other thing is that the other thing that just throws a complete wrench into this game is that you, you are going to have Lane Kiffin going for fourth downs, which could decide the side in total like right there. He's, he's probably going to go for a couple fourth downs in the first half. I think that if he, if Ole Miss has a couple drives early and they fail in like fourth down and this total comes down, uh, I might look for a live over. I, I just don't have a great feel for this game right now just because I don't have confidence in my rating and or feel for this Ole Miss defense and how they'll match up here against Georgia's passing attack. Curious to get your thoughts here. I have hold, held off on Ole Miss. Uh, I wrote this game up uh, for action. It'll be out. Uh, actually, I think it just it's getting published here this, this afternoon. Um, and I was heavy on the over, which I have money on, and I have dabbled in the Ole Miss side. Uh, the injury to uh, Micah Pettis is uh, a problem. And so, you know, let, let's discuss where, where I'm coming at with this game. Now, Georgia overs are something that I think is, what, my fourth week in a row on this, and it just really has to deal with something that you mentioned before. Like Carson Beck is has a really high success rate and a high EPA versus cover three. He doesn't have any explosives against quarters. You're, he's going to see both cover three and quarters here. Uh, Georgia's now fifth nationally in passing success rate. 
uh Carson Beck are you on the over here again I am on the over here yeah over uh, over here um you know 59 being a key number so make sure you get the best of that it did come down I think to 56 and a half I highly doubt this thing gets to 55 Carson Beck still accurate 13th and on target balls targets don't have to change their pace their stride they're getting balls straight in the numbers that's good for them and they have a ton of explosive weapons here the other thing too that I say before I flip over the old miss side these teams are 67th and 70th in defensive finishing drives. They are allowing a lot of touchdowns when teams get down to the red zone uh, or past the 40 yard line. They're almost averaging four points to opponents when they get past the 40 yard line. That, that kind of, well, let's flip to the Ole Miss side when they're on offense. Cause you're right. This Georgia front seven is not pulling it off. Brady cook, you know, 10 rushes for 40 yards. We think Peyton Thorne. Why are these quarterbacks and these running backs having so much success? Outside zone is killing Georgia's front seven this year. When you go and look at what Jackson Dart and and Quinshawn Judkins do, it's going to be a problem. Now, Dart, you're right. He is fantastic against quarters. Uh, Dart's 57% success rate. That's well above average. He has a positive EPA against quarters. He's also explosive against cover and one cover three. But, I mean, it's, it's a different story with quarters. He's really good. And so the question is, is will quarters coverage draw more scrambles or designed runs from Dart? Because it's a cover four. They can double team the outside. It's really tough to throw into, even though Dart's good at it. But I think this generates more RPO. I mean, the R, you know, Peyton Thorne going 12 rushes for 92 yards when Auburn was there to play him. What's Jackson Dart going to do with Quinshawn Judkins? Now, inside zone, they, they run. They run a little bit of power. They both have high success rate. Georgia's only seen power on 23 rushing attempts, moderate success rate, moderate EPA. They dominate the inside zone. So I think outside zone is the way Lane is going to go because their biggest runs this season have come off tight end and tackle left and right. I expect Ole Miss to be in passing downs, throwing often or running outside zone, which is going to get them chunk yardage. Just depends on what they do and scoring opportunities but like i said both these teams are pretty bad at defensive finishing drives at least not up to standard so there's going to be points put up on the board the micah pettis injury is a problem because quinshawn juckins biggest alley of running of yards after contact of explosive runs is all right off the right tackle so my advice i have not put a bet in on Ole miss i have put a bet in on the over that doesn't affect the over because jackson dart whether micah pettis is you know he's out he's ruled out he's not going to be there to protect jackson dart dart is still going to be able to throw into that into into georgia that quarters coverage is going to make it soft in the front dart will be fine but i would say come watch us on saturday morning because i will have money on this one way or the other i really want to bet old miss but the injury to micah pettis is really big to quench on judkins uh and his outside zone to the right